If you love movies and movie discussions, you've come to the right place. Who am I, you ask? I am the Wiz! And I'm here to review the 1938 thriller, The Lady Vanishes, starring Margaret Lockwood, Michael Redgrave, Paul Lucas, and Dame Mae Whitty, directed by Alfred Hitchcock. Yeah, so this is one of the earlier Hitchcock films, but I was going to say one of his first films. But what I found interesting and I never realized is how many films that Hitchcock actually directed. Uh, I'm on IMDb right now, and I'm looking at all the films he directed, and he has 67 films. 67 films! Holy crap did that guy work! Holy... Oh, man. It's not like most of them are bad. Most of them seem to get decent-ish reviews. But I, I think in the first, uh, I guess, 30 of his films that he's done, I would say probably the big ones are going to be the one we're reviewing today, The Lady Vanishes, Rebecca, and The Lodger, I think, is the other one. Or probably The Man Who who Knew Too Much is probably the other one. It was really interesting when looking through all this, he's got more films than I realize. This is not a director I would like to spend an entire year just watching all of his films. So that's I'm going to throw that out right out the window. And honestly, I think half of them are probably very hard to find, if I'm really being honest. Because it looks like a lot of his stuff in Britain is pretty hard to find. I know Criteria has done The Lady Vanishes. I know there is a couple on a box set that I have that are from Britain. And I know that uh, Criterion's also done, I believe, The Lodger. It'll be interesting to see more of his films, but I don't think I'll ever get to watching all of them. <laughs> I don't think it's even possible at this point. All right, so let's get to the review of The Lady Vanishes, directed by Alfred Hitchcock. Before we do that, let's get into the plot. So the plot is basically this. On a train headed for England, a group of travelers is delayed by an avalanche. Being holed up in a fictional European country, young Iris, who is played by Margaret Lockwood, befriends an elderly lady named Miss Froy, played by Dame May Whitty. When the train resumes, Iris suffers a bout of unconsciousness and wakes to find the old woman has disappeared. The other passengers seem to deny that Miss Foy ever existed, so she begins to investigate with Gilbert, played by Michael Redgrave, and the pair tries to find out what happened to Miss Foy. What I will say is that The Lady Vanishes is a very quaint and slippery yarn about illusory memory. I want to joke and say that this is a movie about the Mandela Effect before the Mandela Effect actually existed, but yeah, it's, it's interesting that the film plays a little bit on memory and it plays a little bit on the character and whether or not she's actually kind of lost it or she's made up the character to a certain extent even though when the film starts it, that's not exactly a plot line they can get into because they don't ask a lot of other questions but it is interesting where the film goes with this entire plot line and it's kind of fun to see it go through its paces i, I think one of the best things about this film when in terms of its plot line is how short it is it's been an hour and 35 minutes and for a plot to have something as simple as this whether uh, they can find a woman who is missing while no one really remembers her. I think that is a perfect amount of time that you can have with this. And what I'll say is, well, the twist in this movie is decent, but it's not exactly hard to spot. As soon as a certain character pops up in the film, it's kind of quick to realize what this character is and that he's in on what the twist is going to be about. Even though the twist is pretty easy to spot, I will say that it makes the film pretty entertaining. What I will point out, though, is that there are some issues that I have with the film, but they're minor. They don't hurt the film as much, but they kind of bring into question certain things. I think my big sticking point is for this plot to work, where no one on the train remembers this woman except for the main character in the film, you would have to make it so that she didn't converse with anybody else but that main character. But that's simply not the case. She's conversed with different types of characters in the film before she disappears. And it seems kind of odd that these characters who have conversed with her ends up not remembering her. And there is no way of really rectifying as to why that is. It's, it's something that's odd that kind of ruined the conceit of the film. Because then you would have to figure out why certain characters did not remember this woman. And there really is no logic to that. Now, does it hurt the film in terms of entertainment? Not really. It really doesn't. When you go back into the plot and you start to really think about what elements did not work as well as it should, that's one that really stuck out to me. 
Now, what I will say is this. If you're looking to watch a film that is a Hitchcock film that is up there with the Vertigos, the Psychos, the Notoriouses of those ilk, I'm going to say right now, this doesn't even compare to those. But what it does show is his evolution as a master of suspense. This film does toy around with certain things in his other films that I think he perfected. But to see the genesis of what it was like in this movie and then what it turns into in later movies like Notorious, like North by Northwest, things like that. I think this would be an interesting thing to watch just to see that evolution. But what I will say is this. If you enjoyed like Vertigo and those classics, but you're not really somebody who's like, oh, but I want to know all about Hitchcock. You don't really need to see this, but if you're someone who really loves Hitchcock and you're starting to get into his more deep cuts and trying to uh, see different types of films that he's made that are, I guess, less known that you want to see more of, I would say just give this a shot just to see where it evolved from there. Other than that, if you are not a Hitchcock geek or you're not a film nerd like I am, you might not need to watch this, but it's not bad. I actually enjoyed this. It just had more problems than I was expecting. All right, so here are the footnotes for The Lady Vanishes. This could be an interesting pairing with the film Breakdown. Now, Breakdown is a 1997 film directed by Jonathan Masto, and it stars Kurt Russell. A couple, played by Kurt Russell and Kathleen Quinlan, get stuck on a cross-country drive when their car breaks down. I believe the plot line goes as this. A trucker passes by them, and the wife goes with the trucker to a payphone to call a tow truck. The husband gets someplace, tries to find out if they can find his wife, and no one seems to know where she is because they don't they didn't know she existed. I don't remember you having a wife. I don't remember having like stuff like that. Just just like the lady vanishes. I will say I think Breakdown does this a little bit better, but I haven't seen Breakdown in over I would say twenty five years. So I might be wrong, but uh, this really reminded me of that film. So if, if you like this film, you want a more modern interpretation of it. Possibly Breakdown would be a good one to go for. Overall, I'm going to recommend The Lady Vanishes. I think it's a good movie. I think it was enjoyable. It's just not anything compared to the other films from Alfred Hitchcock. I do think it's an interesting film to watch when you're looking at the evolution of him becoming a master director, especially of suspense and especially of mystery. But honestly... The film is very slight. It's about 95 minutes. You don't get to know many of the characters at all, including the main character. But I'm going to guess also that if you did make it longer, I think the issues that I had would actually exasperate further. I don't think that the way that they thought out the plot really works as well. But it's entertaining nonetheless. And the romance is, I would say, decent. Ish. Overall, I'm going to recommend The Lady Vanishes. Check it out on Max if you haven't seen it, and it's also on the Criterion Collection if you want to purchase a copy. So, there we go. Now, if you want my full review on this movie, you can go to my website at, at IamTheWiz.com. You'll have my full written review right on the site, along with a link to the video that has this review that you've just listened to. All right, so for Thursday, I'll be reviewing Rear Window with Zero, directed by Alfred Hitchcock. Another Hitchcock film on Saturday, The Birds. And for next week, on Tuesday, I'm going to watch a documentary that I've been very interested in seeing. And that is Barbara Koppel's 1976 documentary, Harlan County, USA. I believe this is a film about a strike that happened in 72? 73. 73 is when it happened. It's a coal miner strike. And I've heard really good things about this documentary, so I'm going to check that out on Tuesday. So, tune in Thursday, where me and Zero are going to review Rear Window. Saturday, The Birds, both directed by Alfred Hitchcock. And on Tuesday, Harlan County, USA, directed by Barbara Koppel. I am The Wiz, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.